and welcome to the sixth annual Slow Clothes Fashion Show. My name is Natalie Roisman and I am the Community Art Supervisor at the Ferry Building Gallery. We invite you all to come visit us at the Ferry Building. We are just down the road here. Don't come all at once because we're very small, but do come and visit us. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the Squamish, Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh peoples on whose ancestral and traditional territories that we are privileged and honored to celebrate and promote local artistic talent and creativity. We would also like to thank British Pacific Properties for their generous sponsorship of Art Speaks, which helps us provide over a dozen workshops, lectures, and demonstrations during the Harmony Arts Festival. We would also like to thank all of the event organizers, artists, and volunteers that make this event possible. This event is presented by Wearable Arts Vancouver, the collective of local artists who create one-of-a-kind, unique, limited-edition clothing, jewelry, and accessories. Now I would like to introduce Deb Ryan, Chair of the Slow Clothes Committee, who has been a member since its inception six years ago. She is a longtime West Van resident, an unrepentant seeker of joy, harmony, and curiosity. Deb will be your MC today. Thank you and enjoy the show. Sorry, last minute details. <laughs> Welcome again, and I see everyone has decided that the shade is best, so I hope you will still enjoy our show, and you can see many of the items afterwards, because most of the items that you'll see in our show are for sale. So, yes, we've been in, uh, working together now for six years, our group, we're all volunteers, um, and we're all fiber artists who celebrate the slow close concept. We hope to encourage others to join us. Slow clothes is a philosophy. It's an alternative to the fast in our society. Fast foods, fast cars, fast fashion, not good for us and not good for our environment. So slow clothes honors the environment, tradition, the maker, and the wearer. So when you are wearing slow clothes, it's actually for your benefit as well. You will be more in harmony with the world too. So we hope that you will be inspired to find more joy, more meaning, and more personal expression in your own unique style. We proudly present the work of 38 artists today, sharing the common desire to create in an eco-friendly manner, translating their inspiration into the beauty of the completed item. Each in their own way has chosen to honor the work of the hand, the heart, and the soul. And I, before I go, I just, I'm going to say thank you a lot, but I just want to say again, we have over 70 volunteers, and we've been really helped also by the Harmony Arts Festival folks and the people at the Ferry Building big time. And so we are going to start off, we didn't know whether it was going to rain or shine, because a week ago the forecast said it would be a high of 19 and rain. So we came prepared. Our wonderful umbrellas are made by Liz Burnett of Liz Art Studio. You'll see her over there. And she's a, sorry, I've also got hay fever. Um, she's a multimedia artist in painting, illustrating, writing, and jewelry making, inspired by nature and the beauty of everyday life. Thank you, everybody. This year, we have been honored uh, by Pam Baker, Himekalas of the Squamish Nation, who has uh, kindly let us show two of her uh, gorgeous garments from her work called Touch of Culture. Since 1988, Pam's life mission has been to provide First Nations models, artists, and designers a place and a way to show their cultural expressions and creations. Thanks, Melissa. As Melissa comes off the stage, she will now be coming on the red carpet, and you will notice the fine work in her garment and the wonderful feathers in her hair. Now we are graced by the first of the three garments by our actual featured artist, Fiona Duffy. Fiona is a felt maker recognized for her dynamic sculptural clothes and artwork. And you must remember this is felt, made out of wool, and they're wearing it today. 
She first encountered felt making in 1996, and immediately it became her passion and medium. In her clothing, artwork, and outdoor installations, Fiona seeks to create engagement and encourage expression in the wearer and the viewer. See, anyone can wear these garments from zero to 110. And she's not 110. <laughs> um, so Fiona strives for excellence in design and technique while furthering the medium of felt through the use of new material combinations like felting with paper and using sumi ink work as surface design, which you will see down on the dress below there and the others. Our next model is Margot, and Margot is wearing Rini Corder Evans. Rini was our featured artist uh, last year or the year before, and she also is a felter. Felting is a very popular uh, um, use of uh, fiber uh, in our work. So Rini has always had a love for fine wools, textiles, and all things New Zealand. She mixes her life between New Zealand and here and she's been weaving and making felt making since 1995. And just while you're watching there, you can see the wonderful window pane design in that felt. It's all done in one piece. So those of you who are sewers who are used to buying fabric and then cutting out the details and sewing them up, that's not how it works when you're making felt. It's much more challenging. So Janica is wearing very lovely and bravely, <laughs> we convinced her, it didn't take much. <laughs> she is wearing a wonderful caftan made by Diana Sanderson of the Silk Weaving Studio that's down in Granville Island. So this is wool and silk fabric. It's been organically dyed and then painted. And it's an incredible garment. Thank you. I'm hoping that most of you would know the Silk Weaving Studio, and if you don't know it, take a trip down to Granville Island. Uh, Diana Sanderson started it in 1986, and she has a whole collection of wonderful artists that weave, knit, and dye, and they make incredible garments. And here is a second one that Lynn is wearing. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn is also wearing a necklace by Martha Todd. And Martha Todd is over there, and so is Diana Sanderson's garments afterwards. Now we have, one of these ladies is having a birthday today. And you can guess who it is, because she's decided to be incommunicado. <laughs> it's Stella's birthday. So, they both of Chloe and Stella are wearing garments by Vanessa John, otherwise known as Sarah Phelps. These are intricate pieces, like the others, all made in one piece. They're dyed in with, you need to see them in close up because the detail is incredible. And you are wearing earrings from Diana Sanderson and the Silk Weaving Studio too, right? Yes, thank you. Now, for a change of pace, my good friend Judy. Judy is the ultimate recycler. So every single thing she's wearing, and I don't know about her underwear, <laughs> has been purchased at vintage stores, Salvation Army, whatever she can find, and put together. So her skirts used to be shirts. Her shirt used to be a skirt. You never know with Judy. She's made the jewelry, and the hat is made from her husband's socks. <laughs> and lots of leftover buttons and a lot of time. Thanks, Judy. Viv is our next person. I always think of Viv as my sister I should have had because we both have the same last name. Viv is wearing a wonderful velvet jacket by Della Terra Designs and a necklace by Monica Gewertz, I think, or, sorry, my cards are getting really mixed up here. <laughs> um, thanks, Dave. Yes. Della Terra Designs is the simple beauty of nature, 
is a constant influence in my life and work. I have long been interested in dyeing and manipulating fabric services. To be able to combine my text passion for textiles and my love of the natural world is bliss. And this coat is based on a very old style of bog coats from long, long time ago and designed for minimal use of fabric. The hat that Viv's wearing is made by Cheryl Morriso, and it can be converted into a collar and all kinds of other things. Now we have Betty. Do you want to come right up to the middle, Betty? Do a twirl. Betty is wearing an amazing coat. A uh, few people this morning came by and looked at this coat uh, when we had it outside. There are no seams on this coat. There's no coat, no seam joining the collar, no seams in the sleeves. It's all being made in one whole piece. It is all, so it's Nuno felted, it's echo printed with eucalyptus and hand stitched. And actually has won awards and is going to be going to Toronto right after this show uh, to be in another show. And Judy. <laughs> This is going to be really interesting. I'm going to juggle the cards and, and make the models come out as I call them. <laughs> Judy, is, I think you've been a model with us the whole five years. She skipped a year. We were not happy with her when she did that. She is wearing a tunic, a top, and pants. They're all made by Marianne Greaves, which is art to wear. And. Uh, Marianne says that Vancouver has always been her home. After graduating from Kwantlen College in 1983, she worked for a well-known local designer, and in twin, it, she launched her art to wear a few years ago, and she's now, used, many of you will see her work in many locations in West Vancouver. And Judy is also wearing a necklace by Joanne Waters, and it's made out of the fibers left over from the weaving process at the Silk Weaving Studio, so one does not waste anything in our world. We're going to have three up here shortly, uh, but as you can imagine, we have a very small tent, and we have about 22 models, and it's really hot. <laughs> and here we come. So sometimes our changing time is a little tricky. So this is Lynn, Emma, and Margo. They're all wearing Frida Pagani garments. And of course, one of our famous, um, this is set with the, Lynn, just come back for a sec, sorry. <laughs> and Lynn is wearing a double hat by Cheryl Morriso and a necklace by Joanne Waters. Thank you. All three of these garments are made by Frida. Frida is a retired uh, architect. And she's returning to her Scottish roots now as a knitter and fiber artist. And she's taught her needle skills by her mother as a young child in Scotland. These three garments are recycled, re-dyed, and re-embroidered, and totally made new by Frida's Magic Touch. So now these three ladies are our sun, sea, and sand, I guess, colors. They're each wearing a different artist. So Chu Han, at the top here, is wearing three garments made by the Silk Weaving Studio again. The top, the sweaters, and the pants, and the earrings are actually from them as well. Thanks, Chu Han. Nala, I've just met Nala. Nala is the best cheerleader one could ever want. She is so encouraging. So Nala is wearing a wonderful echo dyed merino wool tunic made by Annie Hunt and a necklace by, oh dear, ja Janet Whitfield and her beautiful necklaces are also over there as well. Thanks Nala. <laughs> and finally we have Janie and Janie is wearing again Diana Sanderson, a beautiful uh, can you sort of just show the inside? Because you can wear this coat any way you want. It's all woven with silk and wool. The pants as well are made at Silk Reading Studio. They dye them specially. And the earrings are also made from the rest of the fibers that are not woven. Thank you. Yeah. 
so now our next few models are modeling uh, clothes made by Ratatouille or Susan Perkin. And our first model is Jenica, a lovely outfit that is quietly elegant and also a slight bit naughty. <laughs> and our story of Ratatouille designs goes far beyond charming and authentic vintage linens hand selected from the markets of Provence. Ratatouille Designs is labeled proudly in Canada and hand sewn in North Vancouver. With Ratatouille's Designs evolving catalog, Susan hopes to stir your imagination with the markets of France, giving you pleasure and tradition in your home and on yourselves because she's using mostly vintage bed linens. She goes to the markets in the spring and she buys all these gorgeous old bed sheets and converts them into these wonderful, wonderful garments. And the earrings are borrowed, but great. <laughs> Thank you. Now we are very lucky. Some of you will recall last year, we had two or three rather young weightlifting kind of guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we decided we needed to do something a little different this year. So we are thrilled that we've got Lewis, Alistair, and Handsome. <laughs> All wearing beautiful jackets made by Susan. Uh, they're vintage uh, fabrics, most of them, and they're, they're based on the French worker's chore jacket. And many of you will know about that because you might remember uh, Bill Cunningham, the famous photographer in New York, who only wore a blue work jacket and he went through five or six in his lifetime. So the first one Lewis is wearing and I have to find the description here. So this one is, it was a vintage hemp bed sheet. There you go, did you know that? <laughs> and it pre features an interesting detail of a previous owner's mend to the sheet. And the jacket hem is all hand stitched from the original sheet. Thank you, Lewis. Alistair. He's really added to himself with his hat and his stick. I missed that. So this one is made out of 100% new linen. And again, based on the same iconic French chore, workers' chore jacket, also which has also been known as Bleu de Dervai, but that's good French, um, made again famous by Bill Cunningham. So the, lit, the fit is loose and casual. These will never wear out. And they don't have to go to the dry cleaners. They actually should not go to the dry cleaners. Thank you. And Handsome is also wearing another chore jacket made from beautifully soft and durable repurposed vintage French hemp household sheet purchased in the markets of Provence. And he has a small embellishment it's a piece of vintage French cotton mattress ticking. That's what Susan does. She's always these little elements. She placed it there to hide a small mark on the original fabric, and I think that it adds some interest. Now, I think something special is about to happen to Handsome. So guess what? Handsome's married to Judy. And these two people are well known in uh, the West End, which is where they live. And they walk around all the time in their crowns. And they have a crown for every single, okay, oh, I told them to kiss, but let's make it clean here. <laughs> and the nice thing about um, Handsome's crown is that it's all leftover stir sticks from all the nightclubs that they've ever visited. <laughs> They're world travelers, so there they go. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Brenda's next. We have grown to love these kimonos, don't we, Brenda? You, Brenda loves these. Uh, we seem to always put her in at least one or two every year, and this year she's wearing one by Marianne Greaves with a necklace by Janet Whitfield. And when she's walking on the walkway, take a better look at the necklace. Uh, it's intricate and fascinating. And next is Brita. Greta. Greta is wearing a new model to us, so that's my excuse for mispronouncing her name, but it's still not right. 
Brenna is wearing a wonderful dress and a wonderful shawl. Again, knit or well, actually felted dress and by Rini Corner Evans and a shawl from the Silk Weaving Studio. Can you take off the shawl right now though and just show them the dress? This shawl, it, it buttons up, but it can also be wrapped around so that you can be glamorous in many different ways. And the dress is again another miracle of felt. It fits absolutely impeccably and yet it's been molded to fit the body, not sewn to fit the body. Thank you. Those of you who've been to our show before know we're, see, we're trying something a little different. We're trying for a non-stop flow, which is probably creating challenges downstairs, is it? A little bit. I think I should slow down. <laughs> So we have Emma, Emma, Janie, and Chumon again, and they're all wearing Alice Phillips. Now Alice Phillips is an incredibly talented artist, and last year, she, what she is selling this year, she had these wonderful woolly, uh, fuchsia colored and orange colored shawls. So this year, she decided, because it was so hot last year at the show, she would specially make these tops and hats for us and they are delightful. Each one is completely unique, and each one is echo dyed and then a, and, and in a whole piece. So they're really quite beautiful objects. Thanks, Emma. And Alice Phillips is a fabric artist working primarily in felt making, but she did switch over to this. Yes, and you're wearing another necklace, I think, by Joanne Waters, using Silk Weaving Studio fiber. Born in Oxford, UK, Alice emigrated to Canada with her family when she was two and grew up in Vancouver and then to Harnby Island. She now lives in Vancouver and she initially trained as a potter, apprenticing to Wayne Gang, many of you would know, on Hornby Island. And over the next few years, Alice and a colleague ran a pottery on Hornby and built and fired a three-chamber Japanese climbing kiln Alice later studied with Alma Schofield. And if you ever want, she teaches from her studio in Vancouver. Thank you. And uh, you're, I'm sorry, um, Chuhan is also wearing a necklace drink. Um, <laughs> by Joanne. No, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Now, so we went from the soft and lovely to the dynamic and volcanic. We decided these four ladies just had to be together in these wonderful garments. So first off is Viv, and Viv is wearing, um, oops, sorry, Care Peterson uh, of Comey. I hope I've said that right. I practiced earlier, but I may be wrong. And a wonderful necklace uh, by uh, Monica Gewurz. Lynn is wearing a poncho by Donna Stark known as Opulence Artwear. And this is all painted. It starts with the plain white silk, becomes this beautiful piece of art. And she's wearing a necklace, oh, earrings by the Silk Weaving Studio, and earrings by, uh, or the necklace, sorry, by Martha Todd. Thank you. Betty, Betty came to our rescue. We've had a few mishaps with this show this year. First time. We had a model fall down the stairs, and we've got two others very sick. So Betty came in very suddenly for us today, but she has modeled for us in the past, so we really appreciate it. And Betty is wearing an outfit by Maria, um, Rainy Corder Evans again. And if you can just open it up, and as you go, when you see how she's pieced these, it's a jacket and a scarf. It actually was originally made uh, intended to be worn with the blue dress that you saw earlier, but we decided it needed its own showing. Thanks, Betty. And Stella, our birthday girl. <laughs> Stella's wearing a shawl by Opulent Silkwear and earrings by the Silk Weaving Studio. Another great top, you know, you just wrap that in, put it nowhere, it takes no space, and before you know it, you're glamorous. It doesn't help if you look like still. Some of you will recognize this wonderful garment. I don't know how you're doing it. Are you still breathing? <laughs> Brent, this
this was the garment that we featured on all our advertising. And it is, of course, by Fiona Duffy. It's a two-piece garment, so it's a top. The, the dress is much like the other one. And then we have this wonderful top piece. Can you turn around and just give them a show? An incredible piece of work uh, by Fiona, I think, who is stuck on a taxi or on a ferry. She was supposed to be here, and I don't think she's made it. Fiona is very well known. She's been published in many international textile population publications. She's exhibited her work in both public and private galleries in Canada, the US, New Zealand, Australia, and the UK. And now she has a full-time studio practice based on Salt Spring Island. Thank you. You'll notice the graphic details on these dresses. She's very uh, interested in architectural lines and, and the use of space and color. And now we have Judy, a lovely calm oasis in the middle of our color and drama. And Judy is wearing a tunic of silk and wool made by the Silk Weaving Studio and earrings again by the Silk Weaving Studio. But what I love the best, do you, are you wearing a necklace too, Judy? Not that one, sorry, wrong one. So it's a lovely garment and very, very adaptable to many possible looks. Thank you. Chloe and Nella are back. <laughs> We're so happy to have repeat models, and of course we have one of our favorite artists is Fariba Mirzai, you'll see at the end. We always feature Fariba's work at the end because it's so dramatic. But we inherited Chloe from her, and now she's doing both, and we really appreciate it. And Chloe, they're both wearing garments by Donna Stark, the opulence art wear. Again, starting with the basic silk, and then all hand painted, so each one is completely and absolutely unique. And your necklace is by Joanne Waters. Yes. Thank you. I'm waiting for one of the models to come out with a hatchet because I know I'm going very fast, aren't I? Are we okay? Okay. This is Margot again. Margot is wearing, I'm going to start with the necklace so I don't forget the jewelers. This necklace is made by Martha Todd. Martha's been spending a lot of time in uh, Mexico, and you can see the influence now with this wonderful beaded necklace. You'll see it better close up. And the dress is by Marianne Greaves. And Judy, I don't know how she's doing this. She's now in her third outfit. Good Lord. I know I'm going to be in trouble when we're finished because I'm making you run. <laughs> so Judy wears, I, I, I think it was last year, she and Handsome went to some kind of a big festival and Handsome wore a necklace made of radishes. Am I right? Yes. I think we should all be so brave. And it was great because he didn't need to pack a lunch. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. So Judy and her crowns. I just wanted to talk to them while you admire Viv. I'll talk to you a little bit about Judy and her crowns. It's about celebrating your own unique soul. It's remembering, don't forget to fall in love with yourself first. And some of you will, re I, didn't, I know you didn't write this, I wrote this. <laughs> some of you will remember Carrie Bradshaw and apparently that's what she said. You have to fall in love with yourself first before you can love anyone else. It's a reminder to be intentional with self-acceptance, self-kindness, and personal grace. Doing so can also have an automatic ripple of offering these traits towards others. So I wanted to say that kind of in honor of Judy, because when she walks around, she brings joy to people, and she gets a lot of comments. Don't you, Judy? <laughs> Viv. Viv is the same kind of spirit. I don't know, Viv, are we going to get you into a crown? <laughs> So Viv is wearing a hat by Cheryl Morisot, a poncho by the Opulence Artwear, and a necklace by Martha Todd. Lovely red stones. Oh, you did it. <laughs> Where's, 
Well, we'll do one at a time. You know, here comes Brenda. I really think this is amazing. They, we have to really say thank you to the models. So Martha is wearing a necklace by a new artist to us. We discovered her. One of our committee members was buying groceries at the IGA in Dunderave. Some of you may have noticed this wonderful lady who works there, and she was wearing one of her necklaces. And now we've discovered Jabu. She is from South Africa, and she makes the most incredible beaded jewelry. And Brenda's dress is by Kara Peterson, and there's a blue and black uh, jacket to go with it. Um, but sometimes the artists find that we kind of play with their things and mix and match them a little bit. And Brenda is wearing a silk poncho, can you get really gorgeous, by Marianne Greaves, and a necklace by Monica Gewertz. The necklace is silver, glass, and rubber, and there's recycled glass and rubber. That's quite uh, common with uh, Monica's jewelry. And laser dyed recycled glass mimics staglocytes. So one of the things I used to say is, I dare you to wear any of these outfits and go shopping at IGA. <laughs> uh, now you certainly, all of you would feel very comfortable wearing this lovely, calm outfit. This is by our very own Roz Aylmer. Roz was our initiator for ourselves for these fashion shows, um, and uh, we're all really happy that she did get us going on all of this. So this is a lovely linen jacket, um, and I've just got a description here of it. So it's a discharge with bleach. So you can see how she's done the design by discharging. The original fabric is the darker color, and then she makes it lighter. And the necklace is a wonderful ne necklace made by just driftwood found on the beach by Frida Pagani, dipped in dye and put together. Thank you. Now the next two people come out, I am shocked. They are so good. <laughs> Judy, you're looking a little flushed. <laughs> I'm going to warn you all right away. If you like this red or this black dress, you can't have it because Judy's going to buy it. <laughs> She's also made that very clear to all of us. And I've lost your cards, Judy. Oh my God. Okay, I'm now in a mess. Okay, Judy is wearing a. I think that is Kai. Kai, here. Yes, the dress and the poncho, and the necklace. I believe this is a good test for me, is Joanne Waters again. It's slightly different than her usual work. Again, these are wonderful pieces for traveling. And Greta loves this kimono. I think she's going to buy this as well, aren't you? And the necklace is by Martha Todd. Do a nice little flip there for the, yes. Really gorgeous. Thank you. Now you may remember at the beginning of our show when Melissa came out with our first garment made by Pam Baker, and this is now our second garment, and it's copper. Um, now there's two very special themes in Pam Baker's two outfits. The first one was the strength, and this one is wealth. So they're very important themes for uh, the Indigenous people, and for us too actually. And her earrings, which you may not see too well, are incredible bronze earrings, which are part of Pam's copper knot jewelry. And a wonderful train, which you'll take care of, won't you? And you won't trip. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I feel like I've been racing. I just have to sort through cards right now, everybody. So talk to your neighbors for a second and decide what you're going to buy. And I will return to you in a second. Ah, but I guess I'm not being given that option. <laughs> These lovely ladies are all wearing garments made by Fariba Mirzai. And now, when we've talked about how you make felt, that's one thing. You start with wool fibers and silk fibers usually. But these are all made with thread 
and amazing kind of through the, none of these were ever purchased in a whole I don't know how she does it and she also talks about the fact that they have a life of their own so as she starts to work they take shape and form in her mind and I don't know there was a new we had a, only four models and suddenly we have five so somebody so, just so you see, be careful if you're in the audience. <laughs> One day you might be asked to model a garment. So take a twirl and then, yes, take your time, because I want to find the descriptions that I had and that I have lost. Oh, goodness. Okay, I found them. Okay, I'm going to tell you about Fariba. Fariba is an award-winning, Vancouver-based fashion designer and textile artist. She creates unique. If I can see. She creates unique textile and wearable art out of non-traditional materials. She was born in Abadan in southwestern Iran, but she's been here now for quite a long time. And she graduated from Kathmandu University in their former textile art and design program. Many of us are mourning the fact that that is no longer in existence. She produces her pieces from scratch, a process that includes designing the fabric, the pattern and design, and the styles to create unique items of wearable art. It's an absolute guarantee, actually, for any of the garments you've seen today, that you will never be seen you know, going to a party and walking into yourself. By incorporating this craftsmanship into her process, Fariba is able to create one-of-a-kind designs meant for a distinctive niche in the field of fashion. Because of this, her designs remain unpredictable and are impossible to rep be reproduced by others. So if you're ever really hankering over a very special garment, you can come to any of our artists, actually. So her garments are called by name. So the white one that's coming out right now is called Snowflake, that's on Chloe. It's a handmade felt, machine stitch, printed, dyed, and embellished. The others are called Naz, Butterfly, Soft Mass, and Sana. So each one are very personally um, named. They're individuals. They're not just something to hang on a hanger. So Fariba's models are going to join me up on the stage while we assemble our final looks uh, for today. Oh, and I think we're almost ready. So our final segment here is a little different, but it's still the same uh, theme that we've talked to you about. And it's all about who are you wearing? So no one here is going to be wearing something that we all know because these are named after famous designers. The idea for this study group of Vancouver-based, very famous weavers started with the question, does fashion inspire cloth, or does cloth inspire fashion? This started us thinking about where fashion designers find their creativity and how they move from an idea in their head to a finished garment. They proposed to each other that without a piece of cloth or textile to drape, sew, fold, or wrap around the body, fashion design would be impossible. As hand loomers, or weavers, we cherish the cloth and want to develop our skills to produce our skills to produce textiles that inspire. So what they decided to do was each one of them to pick their favorite fashion designer, and they studied all their work, their history, their inspirations, and what qualities of the cloth make it suitable for a design piece of clothing. And each one of them then picked a designer. And we are so fortunate uh, to have the honor of being allowed to show these to you today. They're not for sale, they are treasures. Um, and they're on, going to be um, on display at the Textile Symposium, or Society of America Symposium in September this year, which is in Vancouver. This is an international event. So if any of you who love all of this textile, uh, please look that up. It's the Textile Society of American Symposium around the 19th I think to the 23rd of September. So we'll have the, the garments all come up. 
So they're each going to come up and then they're going to stay for a while and I'm going to tell you about each one of them. They're coming from this direction, <laughs> changing things up a little. Each one of these models, we've kind of put the fear of whatever into them because they are each wearing something that's priceless. So still is at the top, yes. There we go. Okay, so number one is worn by Emma. So she's over here. Emma is our youngest model. Now it's not her birthday today, but I think it's Friday or Saturday. She'll be the big one four. How many of us remember being the one four? <laughs> Stella did not let me tell you how old she was. <laughs> so this is based, this is a, a, a shawl woven by Leslie Green. She, her inspiration is a person she called Eva, the first designer. And she existed in the middle to late Bronze Age, 1600 to 850 before Christ. So people, of course, have been clothing themselves for a long time, and they didn't ever have patience with just whatever. And so we've been making garments that are beautiful and gorgeous for thousands of years. So for those of you who are weavers, I'm not, you might understand the technique is crammed and spaced, warp and weft, card woven edges. Thank you, Emma. Number two is worn by Chuan. And this is made by Janice Griffith. And her inspiration was Marie-Jean Rose Bertin, the dressmaker for Queen Marie Antoinette. So if you look very closely, if you're able to, you will see how significant that is and how she's woven all of that in. So this was uh, the timing of 1770 to 1792. This is how they did their weaving in those days for the wealthy. <laughs> Broken turned twill woven on the draw loom using 51 pattern shafts. Someone this morning said to me, who's a weaver, she says, I love the rhythm but I hate loading the loom. Loading the loom with 51 shafts, for those of you who maybe do uh, sewing, is you know like threading your surgery machine, only way worse. Number three is on Lynn. And this is Patty Kennedy, and her inspiration was Paul Poet. Now many of you might know Paul Poet. He's very, very famous for some of us, making the cocoon coat in the early 1900s, 1903 to 1919. And it's crackle weave, stunning. Thanks, Lynn. Nella is wearing a shawl made by Rosie Kirschbaumer, and her inspiration was Mariano Fortuny. And he, he was a designer between 1905 and 1920, and really placed a lot on pleating a little bit like Isimiyaki later, but way before. And this technique is point twill collapse weave. Now many of you will know what Viv is wearing. It's based for, of course, Coco Chanel, made by Kathy Jack, between 1920 and 1960. And the technique is the pinwheel, an exploration in color and weave design. Next up is our birthday girl. Stella, who maybe you can move over a little bit, Stella, because some people won't be able to see you too well, but they'll watch the video later. <laughs> the weaver is Isabel Fusi, and her inspiration is Bonnie Cashin, American designer in the mid 20th century. What you don't know is how much Bonnie Cashin, or many of you probably don't know, I shouldn't assume you don't, um, coach handbags. She was the first designer for coach handbags, and uh, Things have gone downhill ever since then, as far as I'm concerned. Sorry, personal comment. Uh, a body cash, and I said, was mid 20th century and diversified plain weave on eight shafts. Next one is on Janie. Am I right? I'm looking from behind. No, I'm not. It's one of our dressers. These guys are fooling me. <laughs> I don't know your name. I'm sorry. Linda Knowles. And it's based on Peter Nygaard, and that is a Canadian designer, 1967 to the present day. 
and it is a 12 shaft diamond twill. On Brenda, we have 11, 10, 9, 8. Uh, Toby Smith is the weaver, and Gundrin Shojin is the, no, sorry, got the wrong names. Number, yeah. Um, Gundrin Shojin, 1976, to the present day. Shall we just enjoy your training? I think we should. It's going to be one of the long ones. It really is going to be one of the long ones. How are you guys doing? Oh, more people good. Perfect. Okay. So number nine is Beryl Hickenbottom, and her inspiration is the Issy Mayaki, a technology-driven clothing design, night, eight, night, late 1980s to the present, and it's a turn 12 collapse weave. Number 10 is Diana Herbst, and we have a shawl and a purse, and of course I know that Judy loved that when she saw that going with her new dress. Uh, her inspiration was, is Zonda Nellis, another famous Vancouver designer, 1975 to the present day. A plain weave to highlight the yarn texture and varied color pattern. And last but not least, thank you so much for standing in the heat. You guys with wool and shawls is Breta. The weaver is Barbara Mitchell. Her um, inspiration is Nicholas Gasquier, 1997 to 2009 while at Balenciaga plain weave using metallic and reflective threads. So just before they leave, you will notice that things have been happening on the stage. What I would like is, if for Eva's models, you can go, just go back and we'll kind of do a revolving door. Can all the models and, not the models, but all the dressers and other volunteers who are able to come up, just come up to the stage to say a big thank you. <laughs> Particularly the We start planning in February, and our culmination is not quite today. We have our sum up meeting next week, but it's incredible, and then come back. And I just really want to say thank you to everybody so much, and to all of you who have sat out here so patiently in the hot sun and listened to me as I made a mess of my cars. So thank you so much.